Good afternoon, everyone. This is once again Ted the Speed Learner, and I would just like to say um, this is my presentation on cable modems and routers. I cut part of it out simply for the fact that I was going on ranting about things, and I don't like to rant in my videos, but sometimes it just happens. Uh, I was talking about I've met people that are just absolutely petrified of their computers. Even though I've made all these presentations, they're still petrified of their computers. And, and sometimes it just gets on my nerves. Uh, I, I've also met people that you, you see them, they go through high school, they go through college, and yet when they get out, they, they still seem to have nothing more than a third grade remedial education. And I'm sitting here going, how did you get out? But... I shouldn't rant, and I'm sorry, and like I said, I cut that part of it out, so you guys didn't have to see that, and I do that sometimes. I just, uh, I'm not really angry at people, I just get frustrated once in a while, and sometimes I just blow my stack, and I, I shouldn't, but sometimes I do. I'm human. It happens all the time. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy my presentation, I hope you get something good out of it, and hopefully I can ease people's fears of computers by doing this. All right, I will tell you more uh, in this presentation, so keep watching. This is a cable modem. This is a computer router right here. This is a Netgear router. This is a cable modem. This is from Comcast. Now, I know you can buy cable modems at the store. Um, if you want to, that's fine. If you're really confident in what you're doing, that's fine. However, if something does go wrong, the cable company, which this in this case would be Comcast, won't help you. You're on your own at that point. And that's not a good thing. So I would suggest renting the cable modem. Now, when it comes to the computer router, they're not that complicated. And if you want to buy your own router, go right ahead. But when it comes to these modems, they are kind of complicated, and I'd rather you rent one from the cable company so at least give you some kind of service. All right? I know it's $3 a month, but it's worth it. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Now... The cable modem itself consists of, and I've got a light here, this is a phone cord. This ha this cable modem has a phone capability. Alright, so I have Comcast phone service as well as Comcast cable. Alright, so this is your phone line here. This is a USB. This USB actually connects to my Nintendo Wii. Yes, I do have a Nintendo Wii, and this is how my cable modem connects to the Nintendo Wii. Alright. This here is an output Ethernet cable, okay? This right here, the one I got my finger on right now, is an output Ethernet cable. It travels into the input part of this router. See this router right here? It's kind of blinking all over the place. This router is connected to this modem with an Ethernet cable. Now, you see this cable line? This is from Comcast. That's how stuff is pumped into your modem, okay? And the data is pumped into your modem. This thing deciphers it. It says, okay, this part is a phone thing, this part is a, is a uh, internet thing, so on and so forth. The final cord down here is the power supply, okay? Now, when you have a power outage, Comcast will either call you or you'll call them, it doesn't really matter which way it goes, but um, they will have you, uh, during a power outage, not only shut down your computers, okay, and you, you know how to shut down a computer. If you don't, I will show you in a video how to shut down your computer. But anyway, uh, they will tell you to shut down your computer, and then they will tell you to disconnect the power supply from the cable modem and from the router. And then uh, sometimes they'll tell you to connect the modem first, then the router, then, the, then other times they'll tell you to connect the router first, then the modem. It doesn't matter which way they tell you to do it. Just do whatever they tell you. Okay? Uh, some people have one way, some people have another. Now, I will tell you that sometimes you'll get a very good rep from Comcast. Sometimes you won't. If you don't, hang up on them and call again until you get one that really can work with you. All right. Now... I've shown you all the connections on the cable modem. When it's properly working, you will see every light uh, steadily on except one that will be flashing. Okay? And if you see two lights flashing, you're going to have to start disconnecting things and reconnect them. Okay? Do not turn your computer back on until you've got your cable modem back on and your router back on. That way you get a fresh DNS address, so on and so forth. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. 
Anyway, what about your router? Okay, now you'll see right here we have three Ethernet cables. These three Ethernet cables, um, now I used to have three computers, now they have two. Okay, one goes to one computer, one goes to another. And then I have an Ethernet cable here that connects directly to my cable modem. This Ethernet connects to my modem. And then there's a power supply right down here. Now, as you'll see, there are two lights right here. These represent your computers. This is computer 1, computer 2, computer 3, and computer 4. This shows that they, that they are connected, so on and so forth. And it can even show you uh, wireless right here. This is also a wireless router, so if you have a laptop or some kind of a PDA or something like that, you can actually hook it up to this. And this is how you get your internet connection. Alright? Now, on Netgear, you can actually set up your own router password. Okay? Now, if you ever have to, and I hope you can see this, if you can't, I'll just kind of point my finger about, about right here. There is a little uh, hole right here that if you take an inning pin or uh, better yet, a, like a safety pin or something, you can actually uh, press down on this little hole right here. You can actually reset your router. And the reason why you'd want to do that is because you should set a, a uh, username and password for your router and it should be different than the one on your computer. And the reason for that is if you have your uh, username and password set on this thing, uh, anybody trying to connect to your port 80 or anything else, they won't be able to connect because they won't have your username and password. Also, some people like to uh, go in and uh, tap into your uh, computer service. Uh, let's say that they live next door to you or they live three doors down or whatever and they have enough range to pick up a signal from your router. Then what they're going to do is they're going to start using your internet. You don't want them to do that. So what you do is you set a username and password and as soon as you do, they can't use your internet anymore. Only your computers can do that. Now, I know that um, most people like their laptops and whatever. I will say that one of your computers at all times, one of your computers at all times must be connected by Ethernet cable to your router. Otherwise, it creates a real computer nightmare. So, uh, even if your router is off, make sure that one of your computers is always connected by Ethernet cable to your router. That way you can get everything signed back in, so on and so forth, and it's not all that complicated. Alright. I am not going to show you how to set a username and password for your router. However, I will tell you that once everything is connected the way I've shown you how to connect things, all you have to do on a Netgear router is go to your address bar and type in www.routerlogin.com. Dot com. Now, sometimes they'll say, hey, I need a firmware update. Uh, go ahead and let them have it. It may take them 15 minutes. It may take them half an hour to set up your, set up your new firmware. Uh, once it's done, they'll let you in, and as soon as they let you in, you can set your username and password. Uh, they also have something called port forwarding. Until I know more about port forwarding, I would not, as an end user, uh, recommend that you set up your port forwarding because if you do, people can then get into your computer and create you quite a nightmare. We don't want that to happen. So, don't set up port forwarding until I give you further instructions somewhere down the road. Alright. Hopefully I've told you all the basics about setting up a modem and a router. Uh, the cable company will pretty much set up your modem. Now, you can hook up your Nintendo Wii as I have done with the USB cable. You can do that part yourself. The rest of it's done by the cable company. Once the cable company has given you the output Ethernet cable, you will plug the, e the input part of that into your um, 
Netgear router and then plug your computers in, so on and so forth. All of my computers are on Ethernet. I could have done wireless, but they're all on Ethernet at this point. Wireless in a mobile home is kind of self-defeating because there's electrical fields all through the house and it makes it very hard for the computer to detect your uh, router so that's not a really good recommended thing for you to do in a mobile home but in a regular house if your wiring is good enough sure go wireless alright hopefully I've given you the basics on how everything works I will tell you more in a future video so stay tuned